Someone on Instagram asked me what's the dumbest animal on the planet, and really? You really want me to slander them again? <sighs> I'm so sorry, but there's really only one answer here. It's, it's koalas, by far. Koalas literally eat one thing, and it's eucalyptus, but if you strip the tree and put all the leaves on a plate in front of it, it would stare at the plate and starve to death because they can't recognize it as food. Because koalas have the recognition of a flip-flop. Koalas don't have the mental capacity to comprehend rain, so they'll just sit there getting wet and not understanding why. They don't even bother trying to cover themselves. Koalas insist on eating nothing but a mildly toxic plant that basically gives them zero energy. Which is why this bush bear has to spend 18 to 22 hours sleeping because they literally nerf themselves with their diet. And honestly, they might as well just eat dirt. Which they do. Koalas eat dirt. The more wrinkles on the brain, the smarter you are, which is why koalas are baby ass smooth between the ears with one of the smallest brains of any mammal because nature just didn't even try here. A koala's brain is surrounded by fluid to protect it from harsh impact. They had to evolve to survive falling out of trees because they did it so often. Someone said they have a built-in special up crash helmet, I wouldn't go that far, but I see where he's coming from. This is by far the weirdest type of bear you'll ever see. Meet the sun bear. It's the smallest bear in the world, and at about 150 pounds, you probably weigh more than he does. Also, this is what their feet look like, and if I have to see this image every time I try to sleep at night, so do you. The sun bear also has a 10-inch tongue that'll fully extend whenever eating insects or honey, and I cannot even begin to explain how this picture makes me feel. It's basically a giant squirrel because they spend more time in the trees than any other bear. And even though they look like somebody in a Party City bear suit, they're very much real, and Himalayan sun bear is the most endangered bear on the planet next to pandas. They look like nature tried to redraw bears strictly from memory. Out of all the bears, these guys love honey the most, to the point where if you Google honey bear, the sun bear will pop up. They look like somebody told them to act natural and this is the best they can do. Mother sun bears will birth one or two cubs that are born both blind and deaf, which is why the normally shy animal will reenact the revenant if you get near them. The cubs will stay with their mothers until they're about three. And can we please acknowledge how ridiculous these bears look? I mean, these pictures aren't edited. Because they're so shy, we don't know a whole lot about them, but we do know that their numbers are dropping due to habitat loss. And believe me, this is a face worth saving. I actually already made a video about this, but since y'all kept tagging me since I like hearing the sound of my own voice, here's some facts. This new DLC is a golden snub-nosed monkey found in Central and Southeast China. That Voldemort nose job is because they live in such a cold climate where a normal nose would get exposed to freezing temperatures. The golden no-nose can travel in groups of up to 600 made of several complex units. When a predator like a goshawk attacks, they'll put the babies in the center of the group while the biggest, most aggressive males go confront it. The families are so close that sometimes they'll fight over who gets to hold the baby. Females go out of their way to cheat on their partners, but it's actually for a good reason. The more males she hooks up with, the more males will think the baby she ends up birthing belongs to them, which makes them less likely to try to abort it. So yeah, she gets ran through like a track meet, but she does it for the children. They're endangered with about 10,000 of these monkeys scattered across China. Babies are born light brown, but they eventually turn orange after a year. Their fur changes color based on a season to match the leaves from dark brown in the summer to bright in the fall. Because they live in high altitudes in the cold, they'll hug for both warmth and to reinforce social bonds. Like a ventriloquist, they can make loud sounds without moving their mouth. Meet the Jesus Lizard, and no, I'm not being sacrilegious, that's its actual nickname. This South American lizard called a basilisk can do to dash over water to avoid predators, or I guess confuse a now god-fearing snake. A motivated basilisk can run on water for about 60 feet before they sink, and the younger lizards can last longer than the adults. This Christ lizard has tiny fringes on the bottom of its feet, and when it opens up the fringes, it increases their surface area. By pumping their feet like a bicycle, the basilisk slaps their feet hard against the surface of the water, which creates air pockets that keeps them suspended as long as they're fast enough. And if a 175 pound person also wanted to pull a Jesus and walk on water, they'd have to run at a pace of 65 miles per hour while also wearing surface area increasing shoes. The basilisk can only maintain this biblical act for a few seconds, but luckily it's long enough to escape a predator and more than long enough to make a snake question everything he thought he believed in. He's gonna tell his friends and they are not gonna believe him. I can see right through you. I'm not even gonna pretend I was emotionally prepared for that because I wasn't. At all. But I can explain. I already know that birds have hollow bones, but it's not to make them lighter or to make flying easier. The process of flying requires so much oxygen that the lungs actually extend into the bones because obviously bigger lungs means more oxygen means more energy. The bird's body compensates for having large lungs by having a skeleton take up less space than you would think. Exhibit A is what a toucan skeleton looks like compared to what Fruit Loops commercials want you to think they look like. But you wouldn't know that looking at it because it's covered by lightweight feathers and honestly most birds are hiding some kind of nonsense with their feathers. For example, penguins have way more neck than you ever believed. Press an owl and it's the same story, different nightmare. Flamingos are interesting because those aren't its knees it's bending, those are actually its ankles. The knees are actually further up to the point where its feathers cover them. I almost forgot about chickens. The lesson here is that birds are just dinosaurs that nature rebranded with feathers. Toucans technically aren't see-through, it's just that their feathers take up more of their body than you realize. Does not make this any less weird. So people wanted me to explain this, so here you go. That is a bombardier beetle and that liquid ass saw is actually a toxic chemical spray they use to defend themselves. Kinda like built-in pepper spray, but times a hundred. 
The chemical is created by mixing hydroquinone and hydrogen peroxide inside the beetle. You don't need a chemistry degree to know that that'll put almost any op on a milk carton. This reaction is as hot as boiling water, which is what causes the beetle to release its butt acid like an Arby's junkie. And even though that spray can RIP insects, the most it'll do is mildly hurt you. But the spray tastes so bad that sometimes frogs will eat the beetles and then vomit them out. And keep in mind, frogs have to pull their stomachs out their mouths to do this so you know something serious. Because nothing will mess up your appetite more than the beetles' anal dragon breath to the tongue. Speaking of dragon, dragon game, link bio, shameless plug done, video over. Where Australia isn't as dangerous as people think. Like, your life isn't in constant danger just because you live there. Just that Australia has some of the most ridiculous things that you will never see anywhere else. But one, that's not a Komodo dragon, it's too small. And two, this wasn't in Australia. Video was in Thailand, and that was an Asian water monitor lizard, aka Miss Goddamn Kipling. Water monitors are normally shy. When it comes to people, they would rather run than run fates. When pressed, Ravi's bodyguard has a nasty bite filled with dangerous bacteria, and they're more likely to attack children and small dogs. And at nearly 7 feet long and about 160 pounds, they're the largest lizards on the planet that aren't called Komodos. Like Komodos, they're scavengers, and they've been known to make a meal out of human corpses. Since one bite from a pissed-off monitor can cut veins and sever tendons, its bite is actually worse than a rattlesnake's. Oh, and fun fact, most are venomous, and some can sprint at a speed of 25 miles per hour, which is only slightly slower than, um, what was his name? Oh yeah, Usain Bolt. They also have claws and a tail that they can use as a whip, which is why for a brief moment in time, 7-Eleven was the most inconvenient store on the planet. Platypus is definitely one of the weirdest things to ever leave the drafts, but what if I told you there was an animal that was so out of place it legitimately confused scientists? There's an animal with bat ears, a fox tail, a monkey's body with witch hands, and the face of a drug-addicted squirrel. Meet the platypus of Madagascar, the eye eye. This casserole of an animal was such a freak that the first people to see it classified it as a rodent because they literally thought it was a squirrel. But the weirdest thing about them is they're actually related to you and me because they're primates. And you've probably seen one without realizing it. Yep, your boy Maurice was an eye eye. But its acid trip of a body makes a lot of sense when it's hunting. They eat insects and they hunt by drumming on pieces of wood and using those bat ears to find the hollow parts where the bugs are. And they use those Timmy Turners to chew through the wood. Then it scoops the bugs out with that long bony middle finger. Fun fact, according to native legend, if this rehab squirrel flips you off with that middle finger, it means you are condemned to a painful death. Of course, eye eyes aren't evil, they're actually painfully shy introverts that sleep all day and eat at night, so look at that, you might have something in common with this LSD monkey. It's also unbearably adorable while looking like a gremlin, and no other animal confuses me on such an emotional level. Have you ever wondered what animals do to relax or have fun? Well, you don't need to, because you follow me. Crocodiles have been known to take turns giving each other piggyback rides, and since there's no practical reason for this, we have to assume they're doing it just for the fun of it. And normally, it's male crocodiles piggybacking a smaller female. Crocodiles will also pick flowers and carry them around, and apparently they really like the color pink. Otters go sledding. River otters in Yellowstone will find a steep icy hill, get a running start, and then slide all the way down for no purpose other than having a good time. Otters basically treat this winter wonderland like an iced out water park, and like any respectable water park, all the slides seem to lead to water. Hippos chill by wallowing into shallow water, and then the fish feed on their parasites, loose skin, and fungal growths. Basically, this giant hippo takes a spa day and even opens its mouth so the fish can clean its teeth. These sessions are so relaxing that sometimes the hippos will fall asleep in the middle of it, and honestly, I don't blame them. Vin hippos believe in self-care. If hippos had thumbs, they would definitely download this self-care app because it helps you keep your mental health in order by creating small but positive habits to add to your daily routine. Or you could just book a spa appointment with a hippo, but I can't promise you that'll be good for your health. Animals that are way smarter than you think to the point where it might actually be a problem. One day crows are gonna turn on us and it's gonna be bad. Crows have the intelligence of a seven-year-old, meaning this bird is smart enough to solve problems, make tools, and occasionally mess with people. Crows will purposely drop walnuts on crosswalks for a car to run over and then wait for the light to turn red to retrieve the smashed nut. They'll also take aim and poop on you if they feel territorial, if they want your food, or if they just feel like being a dick. Not only can crows remember your face for five years, but they can communicate their beef to other crows, meaning you could really get a whole flock on your head. Even teach their future children about you, so a crow could really violate you for something you did to his granddaddy. I was gonna talk about other animals, but this just became a crow video. Crows are one of the few animals that are smart enough to have self-control because in an experiment, crows were willing to deny a piece of food if it meant they got a bigger reward for it. Basically, scientists would put a treat in front of the crow, and a crow wouldn't eat it if it knew that it would get a better treat if it controlled itself, and that's something human children struggle with. If a crow dies, the other crows will investigate the area where it happened to see if there's a danger they need to avoid. Moral of this video, crows are scary smart. The day they choose violence, we're all gonna get hitchcocked with no loot. more dangerous, a rhinoceros or a hippo? Rhinos are the second largest land mammal on the planet at 5,000 pounds, with its main weapon being a blunt horn that can grow up to 55 inches long. They also have really thick skin and can charge at 34 miles per hour. Fast enough to go bowling with hyenas, and mean enough to humble a whole car. Hippos are the third largest with teeth that can grow up to a foot and a half. 
And before you try to body shame them at 30 miles per hour, they're faster than Usain Bolt, and they're also able to solo squat entire prize of lions. Rhinos aren't super aggressive, the problem is they have terrible eyesight and they can't see anything that's farther than 100 feet from them. If they just barely make out movements, this bipolar unicorn will attack whether you're a lion, a person, or an SUV in the name of equality. Hippos don't need a reason to choose violence, they'll do it anyway. Hippo temper tantrums cost 500 obituaries a year and they've also been known to murder other animals for no reason at all. And hippos can do something that rhinos can't, and that's run your fate on land or in water. In fact, they're actually at their most homicidal when they catch you in their watering hole. Rhinos are bigger and tankier, but at least when they turn up, they do it in self-defense. Hippos catch bodies because that's just who they are, which is why they're the most dangerous. These are normal things you do that would be completely different if you were an animal. Coughing in front of a kangaroo might just save your life, because coughing is how weaker beta males emit inferiority to alpha males, and it's how kangaroos avoid unnecessary fights. So if a roid roo ever presses you, coughing like an anti-masker might just keep you on the senses. Smiling with teeth might seem innocent to us, but it's basically an F you to primates like chimpanzees and gorillas who see it as an act of intimidation or a threat. One woman had a habit of smiling at the gorillas at the Berlin Zoo, even though zookeepers specifically told her not to. She insisted she had a special bond with the gorillas because they always smiled back. Yeah. One day, 400 pound Bikido got tired of her nonsense, jumped out of his enclosure, and proceeded to beat 50 shades of black and blue onto the woman. The gorilla then broke into a restaurant while the mauled woman laid there and realized that not even gorillas mess with Karens. If you're a human, yawning might mean that you're ready to go to sleep. If a hippo yawns, it's ready to put you to sleep indefinitely since this is a territorial gesture to warn you not to come any closer if you value breathing. And with a 2,000 pound bite force, its overbite can divide a crocodile and violate a lion's mouthpiece. What you need to remember is a yawning hippo is tired but tired of your shit. There are normal things you do that would mean something very different if you were an animal. We laugh when something's funny and it's typically associated with positive emotions. But a hyena laughing is associated with violence and homicide. Hyenas produce a giggling sound in response to conflict, stress, and fear, and the best example of this is when they're confronting a lion. They also laugh while fighting over food, so if you ever hear that giggle, don't worry about what shoes to wear in your casket, it's gonna be closed. <laughs> People roll their eyes in annoyance, frustration, and during a third thing that guidelines won't let me talk about, but it's normally harmless. But if a great white rolls its eyes at you, it's gonna be the last thing you ever see. Most sharks have a protective eyelid that shields the eye when attacking prey, but since great whites don't have this membrane, they just roll their eyes back into their sockets before they catch a mean body. So if a shark ever looks like it needs the exorcist, it means the lease on your body is up and your soul's about to get evicted. Hugs are good, you can't live without them. This isn't a hug, it's an invitation to see your ancestors. Anteaters do this to scare off predators, but if it doesn't work, they start swinging with claws that are sharp enough to cut arteries and make you bleed to death. Don't hug an anteater or you'll be hugging the heaven gates.